It is hot take season, and in today's show, I am giving you my five most hot heat takes for the upcoming 2023 season, and let's just get right into it, and there's no other way to start than it is the fact that Damian Lillard will get traded to the Miami Heat, and if we're just going to be honest here, where we currently stand in the NBA landscape of this offseason, I think it is a hot take to go out there and say that Dame will be playing in the 305 next season. There is just so much buzz right now around no talks, and there's a lot of reasons that could be the reason why there are no talks between Joe Cronin and the Blazers and the Miami Heat and Pat Riley, and we'll get into that a little bit here, but Brian Windhorst kind of confirmed that there has been no talks lately. He said this yesterday. Woj reported the 76ers have ended trade talks involving Harden. What I would say, ended what trade talks? I don't think there's any active trade talks in the NBA right now. Certainly not active for Dame Lillard, and I don't think there's anything active for Harden. And I was talking with the homie Marshall Green, and he kind of pointed out the fact that in the month of August, there really isn't any trade talks between teams in the association. Why? It's kind of the offseason in the offseason for NBA front offices. Obviously, the front office job in the NBA is almost a 12-month year schedule where you really get no breaks. But in this month of August, teams usually do, do go on vacation a little bit. So the reason why there isn't any trade talks, well, it might be because the teams are enjoying a little bit of off time before September training camp ramps up, and obviously the season gets going in October. So I do think this could potentially be the reason why there are no trade talks between Dame or excuse me, the Trailblazers and the Miami Heat. But I will say this on the Damian Lillard front. This deal has to happen for both sides. And you might say, well, the Blazers don't have to trade Damian Lillard. I disagree. When you have someone of Dame's stature publicly request a trade like that, if you bring him back into the locker room when it comes into training camp in late September, early October, the vibes are going to be horrible. Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons, and Shaden Sharp, they're going to get their stunt or their growth stunted because Dame is going to be there taking shots and he's not going to be happy. He's going to show up and get his bread, but it's not going to be a good situation inside that Blazer locker room. And you can say the same thing for the Miami Heat as well. You don't want to have Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, Nikola Jovic, and Jaime Hawkins Jr. show up to training camp not knowing if they're even going to be on the team in two to three weeks because, hey, if a Damian Lillard trade does happen, those guys are obviously going to be involved. Not all of them, but some of them will be. Before we move on to, on to some other hot takes, i got to ask you, will Damian Lillard get traded to the Miami Heat? I think it still does happen. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know down in the comments section. My second hot take is the fact that Bam Adebayo will win this year's Defensive Player of the Year. I think there are a lot of things to look at and why he should become Defensive Player of the Year. And if you just look at what the Heat defensive rating has been over the past four seasons, it's been amongst the top of the league each year. Jimmy and Bam, they've teamed up in 2019-20, and they have had a great defensive rating each of the last four seasons. And if you do look at those last four seasons, Bam Adebayo has been on an all-NBA defensive team each of the last four seasons. The kid is an absolute stud. He is so versatile when it comes to playing defense. He can really guard one through five. Just if you don't believe me, go back to the bubble year in 2020-21. He locked up Kyrie Irving in a game, and then he could also defend guys like Giannis at the highest level. And if you look at Bam's defensive rating specifically, he has been a top 15 defender in the NBA the past four seasons. He was 13th in 2019. 20, ninth the year after. In 2021-22, he was second in defensive rating, but if you look it up, it won't show that he was second because he didn't qualify for the games played um, to be in that respective margin, but he would have ranked second. And then last year, he was the 11th ranked defensive rating player in the league. And he has been very vocal about wanting to win defensive player of the year, and it's been on his mind. He actually just had this quote the other day, and he said this, Everybody always looks at the last column, which is how many points did he score in that game. And people forget that the other side of the court exists because of the entertainment business. So for me, that's just that will, that passion, that mentality. I want to get Defensive Player of the Year just so I can have 
the award. And I'll say this, it's a crime that he already doesn't have that award on his mantle right now because he is a terrific defender anchoring one of the best defenses in the league over the last four seasons. You saw his own personal defensive rating numbers finished second in defensive rating two years ago. The Heat were the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Marcus Smart won that deep boy. It's an absolute travesty and a joke that Marcus Smart won the Defensive Player of the Year in that year over Bam at a bio. It honestly still disgusts me to this day, and I'm still salty about it if you can't tell. Make sure you subscribe to the Heat Report because if you do love the Miami Heat, this is the channel for you. We're breaking down news, we're breaking down rumors, we're talking Damian Lillard, and even my own takes on the upcoming season like this video. So don't miss out. Hit that sub button right now. My next hot take, and you guys might have seen this one coming from a miles away, but it's the fact that I think Nikola Jovic will have a terrific second season in the NBA if he's still on this Heat roster. I have him averaging 10 points plus per game this upcoming season, and I know it's a little outlandish to go there, but it is hot take season, right? And if you could see the potential in Nikola Jovic in this past summer league, he averaged 15 points per game in those four games he played. He, his summer league did end a little quickly because he did go overseas to start training with the Serbian national team. But he averaged 15 points per game, shot 40% from the field, 33% from three. And what I like about Jovic is that he is the perfect fit next to Bam Adebayo. He's a big man that can space the floor. He has a very pretty jump shot. He can hit the catch and shoot. He can also grab rebounds and Take it in transition. He has very long strides, and uh, you guys heard me say this in the past, but I think he is very similar to Giannis Antetokounmpo when it comes to looking in transition, right? Like, he gets the board, and his long strides, he goes. And he's not the quickest guy, but he does get to the rim effectively, draw fouls, and if he draws a crowd, he is very good at kicking the ball out. He could be an absolute X factor for this Miami Heat team, whether he starts at that power forward position or he comes off the bench. But I think Jovic could average 10 points per game this upcoming season. We're talking hot takes in this video, but you know what is actually hot? The way this Heat sweatshirt looks, and it is $44 off right now. If you go to our link at chatsports.com slash heat sweatshirt, it's on a limited time. The link will be in the comments and description of today's video. Mine's on the way. I already purchased one myself. So if you want to look fresh this upcoming fall and winter while representing your Miami Heat, go to our link one more time at chatsports.com slash heat sweatshirt. Another hot take here, the Heat signed T.J. Warren to fill out this bench and potential scoring guy off the bench because that's what the Heat need right now. One of the biggest needs for this Heat roster is scoring slash shooting off the bench. And if it's a Damian Lillard trade or not a Damian Lillard trade, say he's not on the roster. He still needs shooting and scoring off the bench. Say he is on the roster. Well, you're going to still need Heat scoring off the bench as well. And T.J. Warren is someone who has flashed that ability to put up high numbers over the past four seasons. He has had that two-year stretch where he only played in four games. He got hurt early on in 2021 for the Indiana Pacers and then missed the following season with foot injuries as well. But you just go back to that bubble season. He had 19.8 points per game, shooting 40% from three and 53.6% from the field. That is also the year where the Jimmy Butler infamous moment happened where Warren and Jimmy got into it. And that's kind of where I want to go with this, right? Like, I know what you you're thinking, how could T.J. Warren join this Heat roster after the beef that him and Butler had in 2019-2020? Well, here's the thing. Jimmy Butler only cares about winning an NBA championship. So if he believes and the Heat front office believe that T.J. Warren is going to help the Heat win a title, Jimmy Butler is going to be on board with it. They could put their differences aside, and I think Warren would be a good piece on this Heat bench to replenish Max Struess leaving, Gabe Vincent leaving. And if you do trade Duncan Robinson in a deal for Damian Lillard, Warren could be that shooter off the bench. So I'll ask you this. Should the Heat sign TJ Warren? Type S for sign, type P for pass. I'm typing my S's, but I want to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section. Last Heat hot take of the day, and it's Josh Richardson returns to the 305 and shoots 40-plus percent from three. We've seen him do it in the past. He's not the best shooter, but he did have that year two years ago where he split time with the Celtics and Spurs. He shot 41.5% from three. Last year, that took a big, uh, little dip down back to his 
more standard range of 36.5%, but he played in Miami to start his career the last four years. He's been damn near six teams, so he's been on a lot of teams in the last four seasons, but I think he will get comfortable back in Miami because he knows the system. He played here before. He's with his best friend, Bam Adebayo, again. And let's just say Josh Richardson is the starting two guard next to Damian Lillard or the sixth man. With Dame, Jimmy, and Bam, you're going to have to give a lot of attention on the defensive side to those three guys. So who is going to be left open from the deep end of the floor? Josh Richardson. So he's going to have a lot of chances to get wide open catch and shoot threes. He's very capable of hitting threes. I think his three-point shooting gets a massive boost this upcoming year because there's just simply not going to be a lot of attention hit on him when the Heat have the ball on offense. I gave you my five hot heat hot takes for this upcoming year. So I want to know your hot heat take. Let me know down in the comments section. I want to hear what you guys have to say. That's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for tuning in. And give me a follow on Twitter if you do want more Miami Heat content. And I'll even follow you back if you follow me and DM me 305 for the Heat area code. At Nick underscore Roloff. Give you a follow back if you do that. So go out there and give me a follow. Thank you.